So in this video, we're going to do an application using integration by parts where it's not so obvious that it's going to work. This is one where it'd be easy to get stuck on and to think that you were going in the wrong direction when in fact things are going well. So this says integrate the secant cubed. So we want to integrate the secant cubed of x. And of course we need the dx. And the idea is, is we can look at this as being two separate functions. We can rewrite the secant cubed as the secant of x times the, sec times the secant squared of x dx. And then we would be able to do integration by parts. We could let uh, u equal the secant find a place where I have room. We could let u equal the secant function. And the derivative of the secant function is the secant times the tangent. And if we let u equal the secant, then we need to let v prime equal the secant squared. But the derivative of the tangent function is the secant squared, so the antiderivative of the secant squared is just going to be the tangent function, so tangent of x. And so then we can do our integration by parts. This integral right here is the same as u times v, so it's going to be secant times tangent. So we get secant of x times the tangent of x minus the integral of u prime times v. So it's going to be u prime times v. So we get secant tangent times tangent is going to be secant times the square of the tangent. So we wind up with the secant of x times the tangent squared of x. And this is where it really looks like it's going badly. But what we want to remember is we do have Pythagorean identities from trigonometry. So the core Pythagorean identity from trigonometry, the one that you're supposed to remember is that the cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. And then what we want to recognize is that the tangent squared is the same as the sine squared over the cosine squared from uh, trig identities. So if we were to take and divide the sine squared by the cosine squared, we would get the tangent squared. But of course, we can't just cherry pick and divide only this. So what we could do is divide all of both sides by the cosine squared. So divide both sides by the cosine squared. So if we do that, we get 1 over the cosine squared, which is the secant squared of x. And sine squared over cosine squared is the tangent squared of x. And cosine squared divided by cosine squared is 1. So we get 1 plus the tangent squared equals the secant squared. And if we subtract 1 from both sides, we get that the tangent squared can be replaced with the secant squared of x minus 1, which is one of the Pythagorean identities from trigonometry. So we can go up here where we see the tangent squared and rewrite it using a secant. So this is going to be equal to secant of x tangent of x minus the integral of the secant of x parentheses tangent squared can be replaced with the secant squared of x minus 1 dx and now I can get rid of this it did its job which was to find a way to rewrite the tangent in terms of the secant and things still don't look good but what we want to recognize is that the secant uh, secant times the secant squared is going to give us a secant cubed, which is the thing we're actually trying to integrate. We're trying to integrate the secant cubed. So if I go down to the next line, I can say, hey, this is the secant of x times the tangent of x. And then I'm going to break this into two integrals. So I'm going to get minus the integral secant of x times secant squared of x is the secant cubed of x minus and minus, oh, it needs to be dx, and then minus and minus will be plus the integral of secant of x times 1 is the secant of x dx. So right here I'm actually in better shape than I, than I think I am. 
it's a horrible dx dx because we can take this we can add the secant cube to both sides so if we do that we'll get two secant cubes of x dx on the left hand side by adding the integral of the secant cubed of x dx to both sides and what's going to be left on the right hand side is that secant of x times the tangent of x plus the secant of x dx and of course the integration by parts technique you know ultimately winds up requiring that you know how to integrate the integral that winds up on the right hand side so we would need to know how to integrate this um, and I think that we actually looked at this one last semester this is this is what you get when you integrate the secant you get this beast right here so we could go ahead and replace this with this piece here and then of course we'd want to take and multiply both sides by one half because right now I know what two times the integral of the secant cubed is and we really want to know what one times the integral of the secant cubed is. So if we multiply both sides by a half, we get the integral of the secant cubed of x dx equals one half of the stuff on the right hand side, which is the secant of x times the tangent of x plus the antiderivative of the secant function, which is this mess right here. We get the natural log of the absolute value of the secant of x plus the tangent of x and then this whole mess needs to be plus a constant of integration.